Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Odin Pro, but this time, instead of running Android, we've got Windows 11 installed on this handheld. Now, if you're not familiar with the Odin Pro, this is a Snapdragon 845 powered handheld. It's great for native Android gaming, awesome for emulation, and in my opinion, it is one of the best, if not the best, Android handheld on the market right now. And like I mentioned, right out of the box, this comes with Android pre-installed, but we do have the option now to install Windows 11 on this unit. Now, it's actually running natively on the ARM chip that's in here. We're not streaming Windows 11 to this device at all. This is known as Project Valhalla. It's pretty easy to install, but you will wipe the internal storage, so I'm actually not going to be doing a tutorial on it just yet because it's still a bit early, but I'm really impressed by how well Windows 11 does perform on this Snapdragon 845. So yeah, this is full-fledged Windows 11 running on this handheld. It's running from the internal storage, which just happens to be 128 gigabytes. We've got 8 gigabytes of RAM and that Snapdragon 845. And yeah, this can actually run Steam games, and it does way better than you would think for an ARM chip. But before we go any further, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. Real quick, I'll show you the activation process. Super simple to do. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So here it is. This is a test version of Windows 11, and they've basically got everything working. We do have working Bluetooth, working Wi-Fi. All the buttons are mapped here. So the built-in controls do act as an Xbox 360 controller. So we can easily use the built-in controls with PC gaming and emulation. Now, when it comes to web browsing, it's way snappier than I thought it would be. I do notice that the Wi-Fi does seem a bit slower in Windows than it does on Android, but that could just be my connection right now. And remember, it's still very early. This is an alpha build of everything. What you need to do is head over to their GitHub page, the Project Valhalla GitHub page. You can download everything you need there, but keep in mind you will wipe Android from this unit, so you'll need to reinstall that later on if you want to test this. I would actually wait a little while until a couple more versions come out, but this is actually looking really promising. And remember, we're on an older Snapdragon 845. It's not the most powerful chip in the world, but it does a great job with Android emulation and native Android gaming. To see Windows running so well on the 845 is super impressive. And in the future, I'd like to see this running on something like the Snapdragon Gen 1. We could get way better performance, but even with video playback from YouTube, I'm at 1080p right now, we do get a few drop frames. Something I would probably never notice if I didn't have stats for nerds on, but going down to 720p does eliminate most of those drop frames. Either way you look at it, it's still a very usable experience, and going into this, I thought we'd have a laggy mess here, but most everything that I've tested so far has worked out really well. One thing I couldn't get to install was Xbox Game Pass. It just won't install. It tells me that my CPU isn't compatible, and you know, I completely understand. We've got an ARM CPU here. But I'd say one of the most impressive things about this whole setup running are the Steam games and how well a lot of them do perform. Now, we're not going to be able to do the AAA stuff like Cyberpunk or Elden Ring or even God of War, but some older titles do run really well on this ARM chip. But, but as you can see right now, I've got a little USB dongle plugged in. I've got a mouse and keyboard set up. Uh, web browsing here, everything does load up really quickly. So if you did want to do some web browsing with this little setup, it could be done, but you got a really small screen. But keep in mind, the USB Type-C port on here does deliver video out, even in Windows 11. And we can also use the micro HDMI port up at the top of the Odin Pro. I did want to run a bunch of benchmarks on this, but unfortunately a lot of the stuff that I tested just went launched due to having an ARM chip. 
One that I was able to run here natively in Windows 11 was Geekbench 5. And with this, single core, 464, multi, 1961. Obviously, the scores here aren't that high in Windows 11 using Geekbench 5. I mean, I wouldn't write home about these, but seeing that this is running on an ARM chip here that really wasn't ever supposed to have Windows 11 installed, it's not looking that bad. Now, I want to move over to a little bit of PC gaming. Steam does install, you can launch it, you can basically install any game, but uh, starting those games up is a different story. One that I was super excited about testing was Street Fighter V, but unfortunately it kind of just got stuck at that main menu, but I was able to get some older titles working on this unit. And first up, we have Cuphead. Not the hardest game to run, but we're sitting at 720p here. There's not many visual settings that we can change to get better performance out of this game. But uh, taking a look up in the top left hand corner, I do have Afterburner running. And really, the only thing that I could display here was the RAM usage and the FPS. CPU temperature was showing up in the Afterburner settings, but when I enable it, it's not showing up in the OSD, as you can see. So I've just taken the resolution down as low as we can go, at least with this game here. And by the end of this run here, I had an average of 51 FPS. We're not quite at 60, but as you can see, the game still looks and feels really playable. Remember, this is the PC version of Cuphead. It's meant to be run on x86 CPUs, and here we're running this on a Snapdragon ARM CPU. I definitely had to throw some Skyrim in here. This is the original version. We're at 720p low, and I thought it was just going to fall right on its face. Initially, going into this with the Odin Pro and Windows 11 installed on this ARM chip, I thought we'd run this at about 12 FPS. But as you can see, we're in the high 40s to the 50s, and by the end of this, we had an average of 48 FPS with Skyrim at 720p. And the built-in controls are obviously working here. There was no mapping I needed to do because in Windows it detects it as an Xbox 360 controller. This is really awesome, seeing it running on this older chip like this. If we were to get something like this on the newer Snapdragon 888 or even the new Snapdragon Gen 1, I think we could run this game at 60 FPS. But it doesn't mean everything's going to run really well. Here's Left 4 Dead 2, and I actually expected this to run better than Skyrim did. We're at the lowest settings here, 720p, and I only got an average of 23 FPS. And finally here, another older one, we've got Dirt 3, low settings, 720p, got an average of 35 FPS. With all of these games I tested, if this was a gaming PC or even some type of desktop with like an AMD APU, I'd say we're definitely on the lower side of things. But given that we're running this on an ARM-based handheld, I'd say this is really impressive playing these PC games that were never meant to be run on ARM chips. I also wanted to cover some emulation with some standalone emulators, but unfortunately, uh, PPSSPP won't start due to the graphics driver. Redream for Dreamcast just shuts down. Now, PS2 using PCSX2 will start up, but we just don't have enough power. Here's Gran Turismo 4 trying to run on this. Now, there might be some 2D games that will work with this emulator the way it's set up right now, but uh, really, the great stuff for PS2 is going to struggle a bit. But it's still really awesome to see Windows running on an ARM chip as well as it is right now. And remember, it's a Snapdragon 845. It's an older chip. We've got a lot of generations ahead of that. And hopefully in the future, we'll see more projects like this, be it a Windows on ARM with higher end chips or even a nice version of Linux that we could install on an Android device with something like that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip. But until then, if you have your hands on an Odin or an Odin Pro, you can always install Windows 11. I'll leave a link to the GitHub in the description. They got full instructions, everything you need to download over there. But like I mentioned, I would just wait a little while on it because it's definitely not made for a daily driver yet. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on this project. And if any major developments happen, like better GPU drivers or just more performance out of the Snapdragon 845 on Windows 11, I will make another video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification button so you know when I post the next one. And like always, thanks for watching.